Hello and welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. If this is your first time here, please make sure you subscribe so that you will receive a notification whenever we upload a new video. Now, in this video, we are going to talk about the yellow fever virus. But before that, I would like to introduce the family in which the yellow fever virus belongs to. The yellow fever virus belong to the Flaviviridae family, right? So this family has viruses which are linear and positive sense single-stranded RNA viruses. And positive sense single-stranded RNA viruses, we are representing them using the sun. The viruses in the Flaviviridae family have an icosahedral capsid and they have an envelope. Right, so under Flaviviridae family, there are two main genera which we are going to talk about. The Flavivirus and the Hepasivirus. Under Hepasivirus, we have uh, two viruses, the Hepatitis C virus or HCV and Hepatitis G virus or HGV. Right, so as I said in the Hepatitis A video, Hepatitis viruses are not related taxonomically. That is why C and G are found under the Flaviviridae family. Now about the Flavivirus genus. The viruses under this genus are just like toga viruses. They are also called arboviruses, right? So you can use this acronym. Arbovirus for arthropod borne virus. And the viruses under this genus include the yellow fever virus, the West Nile virus, the dengue virus, Japanese encephalitis virus, tick-borne encephalitis virus, St. Louis encephalitis virus, and the Zika virus. So now let me dedicate the rest of this video to the yellow fever virus. Let's go. Right. The yellow fever virus is found mainly in the tropical regions of South America and Sub-Saharan Africa. On transmission, the vectors are mosquitoes, uh, primarily Aedes aegypti. Right. So this virus is transmitted through uh, mosquito bites. The main reservoirs are primates, that is human and non-human. If we talk about non-human, we mean uh, gorillas and monkeys, etc. Right. So the yellow fever virus actually has different transmission cycles. For example, there is a jungle cycle that is transmission like within the jungle, right? And then there is intermediate, like if a uh, human gets into the jungle and then brings out uh, the what the yellow fever virus. So this one is usually like at the borders, at the border between where human beings are, are residing and the jungle. And the last uh, cycle is called the urban cycle, right? So this is now transmission like among the humans, maybe you can say in, in the cities, for example. Right. Uh, talking about the clinical features, uh, the patients infected with this virus are usually asymptomatic, right? They don't show any symptoms. But if they show symptoms, the classic yellow fever virus is three stages. The period of infection, which takes uh, three to four days. The period of remission, which is up to two days and the period of intoxication, All right? So the period of uh, infection is characterized by a high fever, that's up to 41 degrees Celsius, headaches, chills, nausea, and vomiting, All right? The period of remission, uh, this one is usually just uh, like when symptoms go and when the fever finally declines. The period of intoxication is realized in only 15% of those patients who are showing the symptoms. And they are characterized by hemorrhage, 
and here we have um, epistaxis, mucosal bleeding, hematuria, and black vomiting. So this black vomiting is mainly caused by esophageal bleeding. And also these patients present uh, with uh, mouth organ dysfunction like acute kidney and liver failure. And also they present with abdominal pain uh, and severe jaundice, right? So if you can check here, severe jaundice plus this high fever makes up the yellow fever right makes up the yellow fever right so on diagnosis firstly we will do um a laboratory test right this including a uh, liver function test uh checking uh coagulation prothrombin time etc right but uh this test is not that specific so uh the ma the main method used is through viral detection right so in this case we can use uh ELISA or PCR to detect the actual yellow fever virus. In, in some cases, we may use um, liver biops, but liver biops is actually a definitive uh, diagnosis. Usually like uh, on post-mortem, we can do the liver biops. We cannot do liver biops if the infection is active because this might lead to life-threatening bleeding, right? So if we do liver biops, we see these things called uh, cancelman bodies, which are actually eosinophilic apoptotic globules, right? So these cancelman bodies, these ones, you see them in viral hepatitis and yellow fever virus, right? So on treatment of the yellow fever uh, virus, actually there is no specific antiviral treatment, but we can do a symptomatic treatment, right? Uh, here we will need to provide uh, good nutrition, uh, maintain the electrolyte balance, and because of massive bleeding, we might need to restore some components of the blood, right? And last on vaccination, we actually do have a life attenuated vaccine, right? Which is recommended for individuals who are older than nine months of age uh, and traveling to areas where the yellow fever is endemic, right? So again, this vaccine is contraindicated to patients younger than nine months and to those who are immunocompromised for example those with hiv right so what we do is we give this vaccine at least 10 days prior to traveling to the area where this yellow fever is endemic thanks for watching if you found this video interesting please make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you receive a notification whenever we upload a new video. Until next time, head bow.